This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org forward slash donate. For as little as $10 a month, you can help people find life-changing guidance. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim. Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima tu'allimuna wa zidna min fadlik ilman wa amalan wa kurban. Ya arhamar rahimin. Allahumma zidna wa la tanqusna wa akrimna wa la tuhinna. وأعطنا ولا تحرمنا وأثرنا ولا تؤثر علينا وأربنا ورض عنا وفرج عنا يا أرحم الراحمين ويا أكرم الأكرمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. so we finish the ayat dealing with the قصص and the ayat dealing with um, the leaving a bequest leaving a will so we said that the the ayah um, 177, I believe, when we talked about all the virtues of, not 177, we said that the ayah that talked about bir and the virtues of bir, it, uh, you know, one, thing, one of the things that I really emphasized and focused was sabr, was sabirin fil ba'sa'i wa darra. And there is a bit of a focus on this in Surah Al-Baqarah and uh, the tests and trials that come to people. Some people are rocked with trials that uh, others can't even imagine, you know, I'm hasib to man tadkulu jannatu wa lamma ya'tikum mathalu alladhina khalaw min qablikum. Did you, Allah says to the Sahaba, did you convince yourselves that you learned to paradise whilst the similar the similar situation of those that went before you hasn't come to you? And, you know, he says they were shaken, you know, really, even the, the prophets got, you know, got to the point of, you know, they were asking when will Allah's help come because they just too much. So, with patience being that virtue and then one of the times we need patience at death and then when death comes there's you know you need to make provision for those uh uh who we leave behind so we, we follow this trend this thread again of patience and one of the things that helps promote patience and one of the things that is this you know described as you know an avenue of developing patience within a person is fasting so now we come to the ayat of fasting and also it's also one of the laws that, you know, um, the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, you know, they, they neglected, they left, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, highlights this issue for us and how he wants us to fast. So let's just, you know, let's look at this issue, um, <clears throat> this great act of worship. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts um, these ayat. By saying, Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, O you who believe, O you dear servants, you know, who believe, there's tashrif and ta'zim, there's an honoring of the believer in this. O you who have believed, decreed upon you is fasting as it was decreed upon those before you, that you may become righteous. Right? So let's say, Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, we talked about this a number of times. Kutiba alaykum, so it's been written and decreed upon you, it's such a strong decree. That it's, it's as though it's been written and placed for everyone to see this rule isn't changing, right? Be apprised of it, be, be aware of it. Kutiba alaykum as siyam and siyam, right? Uh, is, is, you know, the plural of uh, fasting, of psalm, right? And so the root word, there's a bit of a difference over where it comes from. Some of the ulama mentioned that psalma uh, just means to, to withhold uh, doing something, not do, not doing something. So you could say Sama an al kalam, right? He he just didn't talk, right? Uh, Abu Saud uh, has an interpretation, and he says that it's actually connected to uh, a root, which is, you know, it's it's refraining from doing something that, uh, you know, the self, the ego, that that a person wants to do. So it's not just. So the, the, the core root of the word comes from holding yourself back from doing something that your soul would want to do, that your ego would want to do, that you'd want to, your nafs would want to do. And then derived from that was the meaning of just withholding and not doing, refraining in general, right? So 
So it says, Kutiba alaykum as siyam, right? So siyam, fasting, <clears throat> has been uh, decreed upon you and, you know, uh, made obligatory upon you. Kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum. Just as it has been, so uh, this ayah has three individual components. Yes, so there's the address, Ya Ayyuhu Ladhina Amanu. Then Kutiba Alaykum as Siyam. So there's the obligation that, you know, it's been made uh, obligatory on you. Kama Kutiba Ala Ladhina Min Qablikum, like it was made obligatory on those before you. And then La'allakum Tattaqoon, you know, one of the reasons, right? You know, and something to uh, worth noting that when whenever Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gives us a command, or, or the, if, the, if there's a prohibition, in general, um, I believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives some sort of reason why, because it's easier for us to do, right? Although generally, you know, the attitude of the believer is to the best of your ability, سَمِعْنَا وَعَطَعْنَا We heard, we obeyed, right? Um, but here, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives a reason in order for you to see the wisdom in it because it's easier to do something when you see the wisdom that's like for example when you're training someone or you're training a child or something and you want them to do something explain right that if you do this you know uh, it's good for you for x reason you know it's 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 better that way so he says uh, as it was made obligatory on those uh, who were before you right min <clears throat> The one of the understandings you get from it is that these people who were just before you, right, the Jews and the Christians and maybe even other nations, even if they stretch back far into time, but it's been presented as though, you know, it's not far off, right? So why do this? So seeing that they are just before you makes it easier for us to do. Oh, well, others have done it, so it's manageable. So if they can, you know, they did it, and it, so we can do it. So there's a bit of, you know, it's, it's put forward in a way that would make you, you know, think, yeah, it's easy, I can manage it, right? Secondly, you know, it makes, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to compete with each other in, in doing good. They've done it, we can do it, right? And, you know, we want to please Allah more, right? So do that. And, you know, even if it's difficult, as they say, you know, when, when, when there's a difficult matter, if, um, if it's shared and if, if many people have to do it, it's easier to handle, right? I mean, for example, um, say in a prison, right, someone's put in solitary confinement, right? Very difficult. That's the whole point of it, right? So he's put in this environment which is difficult. If there's no external stimulation, whatever, right? But when there's a lockdown <laughs> in a whole country, uh, you stay at home, you can't go out, even though there's some form of stimulation. When it's shared, it's a lot easier than if it's just uh, having, having to be done all by yourself, right? So, um, so you know, so it's, you know, it's to, it's to, so so that's one understanding, and also the understanding is as it was made obligatory on those before you. So there's a, a difference amongst the ulama. Did they have to fast in the same way we did? And, or did, or did they have to fast in a different manner, right? Was it from, you know, dawn until sunset as ours was, or was it different? And so, so the ulama mentioned you know, a, a couple of things. Um, Allah. So what happened is, um, what they mentioned is, um, that it was made obligatory um, uh, on the Jews before that before us, and what they did is, you know, they they stopped. They, they just didn't do it, and instead of fasting the whole year, they they said we're going to fast the tenth of Muharram, right, the day of Ashura, which is uh, the reason, which was the day that um, they they were rescued from Fir'aun, right. So just as you know. Fasting a month was made obligatory on us, it was made obligatory on them. And they said, we're not going to do it. And we'll do something to compensate for it. And then uh, they did it uh, in Ashura. As for the Christians, same thing, you know, it was made obligatory on them. And, uh, you know, as the year, because we go to the lunar calendar, as the year, as the, the month of fasting moved around during the year, when it came to summer, they said, they said it's too hot, we're not going to do it, right? So, you know, we'll do it at another time. And they fixed it, like in spring, you know, with the concept of Lent and all this. And so they fixed it in spring. And, and then they added 10 days, 
right? So obviously we're talking about some denominations of the Christians. Maybe, you know, the global practice right now isn't this, but historically it was. So they did it and then they added 10 days, right? Um, to to compensate for it, and even 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 if you look into Lent, you know even the type of fasting, you know some people give up, or is it something that they crave, like they'll give up chocolate, right? Others will give up wine. Uh, others give up uh, milk, eggs, you know, flour, whatever, meat, right? So it was changed. The obligation was changed, but Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said it was made obligatory on them, and He's saying, Yeah, you will live in or you who believe your iman calls you to respond to this right fast right they, it was made obligatory on them it's made obligatory on you it's it's the it's the the way of the believers and then he says in order that you you gain taqwa because one of the reasons you know for example um uh, one way in which people uh, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam um encourage people to do this right you know, there's many hadith about this and we won't go into the hadith but uh, you know one of the one of the ways in which people um can fall into sin is with regard with regards to the opposite gender right and so you know he said yeah ma'ashir al-shabab man istata' minkum al-ba'a uh, for, you know, whoever of you can, can afford it and to support a wife, get married, right? Otherwise, fast, right? Because fasting, uh, it, it, um, it cools this innate desire within a person. And, you know, it, it's demonstrable, this, right? You know, people can notice this. And uh, it, it aids a person in, you know, staying away from that which is uh, haram. And also because you're because you're willingly and you're you're voluntarily leaving something that is normally, you know, you can you can walk you can walk up to the fridge, open the fridge, get a cold drink out and drink anytime you want. But whilst you're fasting, you know, you've chosen because your iman dictates this, you've chosen not to do this, right? Like you, you know, so it's it's a type of training which you know uh, which which you can apply to other things, right? So in the hope that you know we for us to hope that we become uh, people of taqwa, right? <clears throat> so, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to facilitate that. And then, so, it's translated as righteous, but we, we know the meaning of taqwa and we've talked about that before. So then, what happens is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ayyaman ma'dudat, right? Fasting for a limited number of days. فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ Right, so it's just a few days, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, fasting for a limited number of days, so whoever among you is ill or on a journey during them, then an equal number of days <clears throat> are, to be, are to be made up, right? And it's interesting <coughs> that ayam is <coughs> ayam is a plural of yawm, right? And uh, but there are two types of plural, many, many types of plural in Arabic, but with regards to number. Um, there's a, a plural which is used for a few things, and then there's a plural that's used for a lot of things, right? So, ayam is a plural for uh, uh, three to nine in terms of number, although it's 30, right? But Allah expresses it with this word to show, look, it's still a few, right? Out of the 360, you know, uh, 65 or 354 days, if you go by the lunar calendar, out of all these you know, days, it's just 30, right? And so he says, ayam and ma'dudat is it's a number of days which you can count easily. Because imagine if you've got, a, if you've got uh, seven or eight pebbles thrown before you, you can count them out. But if come, someone comes and throws a big pile, you're not going to bother counting because it's too many, right? So it's that kind of understanding. Because it's so few, you can count it easily, right? Ayam and ma'dudat, just a few limited number of days. For فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says So from amongst you whoever is ill Right uh, Or on a journey Then What's implied then you fast In exchange of it uh, An equal number um, From other days So outside of Ramadan right? So in Ramadan if you're ill And you don't fast or you can't fast Right. Or if you're traveling, so this is a rukhsa, right? It's a dispensation. If you're traveling, you don't have to fast, right? And so what you do is, because the original obligation is there, and the obligation brings with it a reward, right? As we know, 
that you know who, if whoever deliberately misses a fast the reward that he would have got for it even if you fast for the rest of your life you can't actually you know get that through voluntary fasts right and you've lost out so with with one exception if there's a dispensation here and imam alusi with the coming verse he mentions very clearly that you know if because of this ruksa so if someone's ill in ramadan and you fast at another time then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the reward of those fasts outside of Ramadan as though it was in Ramadan, so you'll get it fully. So whoever's ill or on a journey, they make up an equal number uh, uh, from other days, like non-Ramadan days, right? So dispensation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the ayah continues and uh, he says, وَعَلَى الَّذِينِ يُطِيقُونَهُ فِدْيَةٌ طُعَامُ مِسْكِينَ فَمَنْ تَطَوَّعَ خَيْرًا فَهُوَ خَيْرُ اللَّهِ وَأَنْ تَصُومُ خَيْرُ لَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ And upon those who are able to fast but with hardship, a ransom, right, a substitute of feeding pop, uh, a poor person each day. And whoever volunteers excess is better for him, but to fast is best for you if only you knew. Right, so, right. So, now this is a very interesting part, uh, interesting um, verse and uh, I won't go into it in full detail, but basically what is being said here is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying وَعَلَى الَّذِينِ يُطِيقُونَهُ Right? Now there are two interpretations for the word uh, يُطِيقُونَهُ Right? <clears throat> and uh, So Abu Saud uh, So the ulama have never a number of opinions on this so the, uh, the two main interpretations Abu Aladini uh, Yutiqunahu they say so, so there's, uh, there's two interpretations one of them if you go with the first one it would be abrogated right and so let's explain it so Abu Saud says Wa Aladini Yutiqunahu Fidyatun so th those who can capably fast right uh, upon them is a fidya. Fidya literally mean like is translated as a ransom. You know, um, someone's taken some uh, someone of yours to get them back. You give something, right? So it's as though that you know you don't have the reward for not fasting because you're able to fast but you haven't fasted, and <clears throat> so to get that reward back, you you do something else, right? Which is what you're feeding a poor person. Which is what nisf in minbur, which is like it comes to about a couple of kilos uh, of flour what you know uh, or you know um well uh, or, or dates and these, these sorts of things um <clears throat> allah so in the past these things were of equal value it's it's, it's, it's described in detail in the books of fiqh but you're giving us uh, in a, a small amount of uh food like flour or something or you can give its monetary equivalent in the hanafi school uh, which is easier, you know, because, you know, if you're poor and you need to buy some shoes and someone gives you here, you're poor and you here you have this flower. <laughs> it's, uh, you, you can't do as much with the flower. Um, so uh, you can give the monetary equivalent. So that's the first interpretation, right? And the latter interpretation is actually, uh, it, it seems stronger and it, it, it's, it's, it's what the fuqaha uh, went with as well. So it says, وَعَلَّ الَّذِينِ يُطِيقُونَهُ فِدْيَةٌ So what is the word يُطِيقُونَهُ إِطَاقَةٌ It means those that can do something but with extreme difficulty, right? You're pushed to your limit, right? You know, with بِمَشَقَّةٌ And the word مَشَقَّةٌ in, its, in and of itself is very strong. It's like it's being split. So, you know, for those that can fast but with extreme difficulty, such as who? Right, so you know they say someone who's um, uh, who's old, right? They say a Fani, someone who's really old, and yeah, maybe he could fast, but it'd be difficult on him. It will affect his health negatively, right? An old man, an old lady, and or and then uh, added to this, you know, it's like for example a pregnant lady or uh, someone who's breast breastfeeding, because it can affect the child, you know. So or they say someone that. So for those that can do it but with extreme difficulty, right? Uh, so, uh, and so some of the ulama, so even within this, there's a couple of opinions, but let's just keep it to this. Because, you know, so for the old man, some say, you know, he has to be able to uh, be at a position where he can't fast again. Um, meaning, if he was to try, it would seriously affect his health. 
So uh, we, we, if, if you take it like this, those that can do it but with extreme difficulty, there's a fidya. That's when they pay a fidya, right? It's not just a case of, oh, I can't fast it, I'm too tired or whatever, I pay a fidya. No, there has to be uh, you know, a strong reason. Uh, fidya tun, they pay the fidya, what's that? Ta'amu miskin, right? So they pay, they, they give food to a miskin, like a poor person. We talked about this one who's so poor that, you know, his poverty has made him still, like he hasn't had any food, he doesn't have, have the energy to move. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَنْ تَطَوَّعَ خَيْرًا فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ Right, and whoever uh, voluntarily gives more, right, something of the good, uh, meaning that when he is given the fidya, he doesn't just give the bare minimum. If he gives more, for who khairun lahu, it's better for him, right? Why he's getting more reward, right? And you know he's doing it in exchange of uh, a fast, which would have been obligatory, but he can't, so he gives more. He gives the fidya, and he gives more. And so whoever does that is better for him, right? وَأَنْ تَصُومُوا خَيْرُ لَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends the verse. It says, and your fasting, and in that you fast is better for you. Right? Clearly, it's, it doesn't apply to someone whose health is at a point where if he or she fasts, is going to bring actual harm. Right? So, um, just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that it, even if, you, if you're slightly ill, or if you're ill, but you can get through the fast, Right, or, and as we have with, with the rukhsa of the traveler, so if if you're fasting um, uh, before the day starts, before dawn comes in, and you know, uh, as Imam Malusi clearly mentions, uh, that ala uh, suffer is indicated that you know you're firmly you are a traveler when the fast starts. So before Fajr comes in, you're fasting, and uh, you know, as a traveler, it's difficult, right? But You've been given the dispensation, right? Um, if you choose, you, you don't have to fast, right? If, if you got a little sniffer, a little bit uh, ill, you should fast, right? But, you know, it's not, you know, nothing major. But if, if you, you know, if you've got, like, you know, you know a more intense illness, um, yes, you can not fast, but for you to do so, it's far better, right? It's far better. So there's this encouragement, there's a recognition of human weakness, right? And there's encouragement, but do what you can, you'll get more, right? You'll get more. Okay. Uh, uh, if only you knew. If, if you know, if you're knowers, if you're people that know in Kuntum Ta'alamun, if, if you knew, then you'd always choose to fast, right? That's basically what's being said. So then, next verse. Because we've been told it's just a few days, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now tells us what the few days are. Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an huda lil-nasi wa bayinatin min al-huda wal-furqan. Faman shahida minkum al-shahra fal-yasum. So the, the month of Ramadan is that in which the Qur'an, uh, in which was revealed the Qur'an, a guidance for people and clear proofs of guidance and criterion. So whoever Sights the new moon of the month, let him fast it. Excellent. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so clarifies what the few days are. Shahr is the month of Ramadan. Ramadan comes from a word which means something being burnt up or incinerated. Or the feeling, you could be, so uh, it could be like the feeling of someone who's in, in hot weather, uh, you know, when he's fasting and he's really parched and thirsty. Or it feels like he's being burnt up because of lack of hydration. That's one interpretation. Another interpretation is Ramadan. It's the month of fasting, right? And they said that when the Arabs were naming their months from older language, which was transformed, when they were naming their months, uh, Ramadan happened to be in summer. So they gave it a name that's connected to heat and something being burnt up. Right, and another interpretation is that, which you clearly saw here, um, is that when you fast, the fasting and the other good deeds you do in Ramadan, but just the fasting itself, it incinerates your sins, it burns up your sins, right? So, you know, it's like they're gone, right? So, Shahr Ramadan, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an, is that in which the Qur'an was revealed. Now, what is in, there's a whole discussion on this, which we take, study in Ulum al-Qur'an. What does it mean it was revealed? Uh, Ibn Abbas had the opinion 
that it meant, it meant that the, the Quran came down from the Lawh al Mahfuz to the first sky, and then Jibreel brought the relevant, relevant verses from there. Um, the dominant position, which Abu Saud and Sayyid Tantawi and Alusi and many others go with, is that uh, the meaning here of the Quran being revealed is that it's, uh, it doesn't mean that it came down to the first sky, right? It means that from the Lawh al Mahfuz, its actual revelation started in this month, right? As we know, the first revelation came on the 17th of Ramadan uh, when Iqra uh, was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that was Laylatul Qadr in that year. So, Shah Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran because it came down, it, it, its first revelation came, right? And when we see that, what is it? Hudan lin nas, it came as a source of guidance for humanity, right? And that's what why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So fasting is also a form of commemorating the, the revelation of the Quran, right? And so they're, they're, they're very much connected. That's why people, you know, do the khatam of the Quran in Taraweeh. People tend to engage, they have more of a desire and a, a will and, you know, to engage with the Quran more in Ramadan. So Shah Ramadan, alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran, so that's that's the proof that saying that it, you know because if we're saying it came down from the Lawh al-Mahfuz to the first uh, sky, then what guidance is being you know uh, disseminated like that if you just move from one point to another, right? But here, if we're saying that if it's if its guidance started and it comes to humanity, and that's where you know the teachings uh, first started and to, to be spread, it came to the Messenger of Allah. He started teaching people. The, the meaning is much clearer. So that's the dominant position that the revelation <clears throat> started. Fihi uh, hudan, and this is the word for guidance, right? Or hudan. So there's other forms like hidayah, right? Hidayah, hudan. Hudan is a much stronger word, much more powerful, emphatic, so perfect guidance for humanity. Allah, <coughs> uh, uh, and you know, uh, Subhanallah. And so Imam Alusi he talks about this point. Hudan here meaning, although it means perfect guidance for humanity, here what's implied here is that the Quran itself came with its proofs. To show this is the truth from God, because to know that the the Quran is revelation, uh, is a form of guidance to recognize this has come from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So it comes in a form which is mu'jiz. In a, you know the very first revelation had a proof of you know the Quran being from God and it being the truth, right? The description of or the description of the embryo, the alaq, right? <clears throat> so it's it comes as a source of guidance which shows itself. I am the truth from God, right? So that's the guidance it is from. Um, so that's the first huda. Huda li nasi wa bayinatin min al huda wal furqan, and it comes with clear proofs. Bayinat, uh, a bayina is an incredibly clear proof which um, leaves no doubt. Right? It's it's so obvious. You look at it like, yeah, this is it. There's no, it can't be anything. It's a bayinatin min al huda, which uh, which which has a huda. Which which here you have the the guidance of do this. It's good for you. Do that. Uh, it's, it's good for you. Don't do this. Don't do that. Um, it's, you know, don't do this or that. And you know, you'll benefit, right? And for Quran. Is that it's it's a criterion. It distinguishes between what's right and what's wrong, right? So it's it's translated as a guidance for the people. So we talk about saying that element is for the proofs and clear proofs of guidance, clear indications. This is guidance. This is right. This is wrong. This is beneficial. This is you know this is harmful. Uh, so then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "For man shahida min kumu shahra, falyasum," right? So whoever, so shahida can mean whoever's present within the month or whoever witnesses the month. So the Allah said whoever witnesses the moon, but weaker position, you know, not everyone goes out to look. So whoever is existent as a believer in this month, from shahida min kumu shahra, then fast it, then let him fast in it, right? Uh, this is what they call in grammar al-hadfu wal isal right? So the word fi is, imp is implied. Fal yasum fihi, that's implied. So let him fast in the month, meaning the entire duration of the month uh, in the hours that you can fast, which we look at. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, وَمَنْ كَانَ 
ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر and whoever is ill or, uh, or on a journey then he make up uh, an equivalent number from other days right so whoever is ill or on a journey uh, then an equivalent number of other days you read Allah with it uh, يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكمل العدة ولتكبر الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون Allah intends uh, for you ease and does not intend for you hardship and wants you to complete the period and to glorify Allah uh, for that which he has guided you and perhaps you'll be you perhaps you'll be grateful okay let's look at this so he says so whoever's ill so there's repetition of this in order to further clarify that this is a rukhsa allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it easy for you right <clears throat> there's a facilitation in this uh, right so from uh, kind of minkum maridon if you're at home and you know you're ill right you don't have to fast right and or if you're firmly on if you're on a journey meaning you, you, you're a traveler before the the dawn comes in before the fast is due to start then make up an unequal number like i said imam alusi argues you know, he says that you know um uh the reward for the fast uh, will be gained right no matter what um and perhaps there is still more reward in doing it in ramadan right but you, you don't lose out like that uh and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so here as as we're saying you know it's not about uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says yuridu Allahu bikumul yusr Allah wants ease for you wala yuridu bikumul usr and he doesn't want difficulty for you right so I mean this doesn't mean that you know, if Allah uh, if things were meant to be easy and everything then we'd be in paradise right now right but what it what it means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated things for your benefit you know and said don't do the, these other things because they're harmful for you and ultimately doing that leads to a reward in paradise right but the application of these laws the sharia has inbuilt mechanisms that if it gets too is a amr it does when something when the matter becomes constricted it's too hard to do it automatically it widens right so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that he's made this uh, within the sharia for you that he has uh, obliged you uh, right you're ill doesn't matter it's Ramadan you have to fast doesn't matter if you're, if you're in death's door you're still ill doesn't matter you have to fast it's not like that right so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you read the law become a user Allah wants ease for you that's why he's facilitated this matter so it's 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 showing it's it's leading us it's guiding us to be grateful. Look at what Allah is doing for you to facilitate matters for you. Look at what the previous people did. The Jews just stopped fasting altogether. 30 days too much, right? We'll just do one. And right? the Christians said, oh, we'll just move it to spring. You know, we'll, we'll give up sugar or, or you know, whatever, right? No. So he's saying, look, here it is. This is how it is. And Allah has, but if in these situations where there's clearly a, a palpable difficulty, don't fast, right? If you don't want to, you don't have to fast. Make your part another time and you'll be rewarded. So then he says, <clears throat> he says, um, well, it took me, and then it, it, it's difficult in Arabic because there's there's implied statements here that Allah has done all of this, this ease, this facilitation for various reasons. And then he says, um, Allah, for example, Allah, you could say Allah has obligated the fast for um, for those who are well and are in, at home and is obligated the, the rukhsa, the dispensation for those that are ill or those that are travelers uh, out of, and he's done this out of uh, recognizing your, your abilities and you know your situations and and he's done this so he's legislated all this for you to complete the number of days. So if you don't fast them in Ramadan because you're ill or you're traveling, you still make up the days. Well, it took me no idata, so you can complete the number of days, right? Well, it took kabir Allah ala ma hadakum, and that you do, you do takbir. You say Allahu Akbar. You know, you magnify Allah. It's more than just saying Allahu Akbar. And <clears throat> the word ala, well, it took kabir Allah ala implies that the word hamd is also in there, right? So you you magnify Allah subhanahu wa taala and you praise Him. For the guidance that he's given you, didn't he send the Quran down in this month? Right? Alama Hadakum. Didn't he teach you these rules? Right? Didn't he teach you all of these these, um, these 
these the laws of fasting to show that fasting is better for you so that you you magnify and you praise Allah you know for, for him having guided you and so that you can hopefully you yourselves can hope to be people that show continuous thanks right one of the reasons why you'd be showing thanks all of the benefits that you get through fasting uh, the taqwa and the closeness to Allah and you know the protection from sin all of these things and you know, um, for, for the dispensation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this matter easy for you, right? So, yeah, so we'll call it a day with this verse and then we'll continue with the next verses, inshallah ta'ala. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Visit seekersguidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit seekersguidance.org forward slash donate and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.